Yeah, John chapter 13, starting at verse 31 that we just heard in our, in our hearing. So let's pray together and ask for God's help as we take a look at this portion of Scripture. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity to come together like this. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have in this country to take a look at your word without any recrimination. And we pray now that the Spirit of God would illuminate it in our minds and in our hearts, that it would be applied to our lives. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there is something in all of us that desires to be lifted up. If you talk to children today as they're growing up, people want to, you know, kids want to be famous, rich and famous. And they watch TV and, and uh, you see all the, the shows that are on, the awards programs and the Academy Awards and the Emmys and all this stuff and the red carpet and all the lights and the cameras are on. And people just imagine themselves being like in that kind of a spotlight. They, they dream of walking on that red carpet with the light on them. But, but Jesus, in this particular text, uh, he sits with his disciples. And re you remember, he just sent Judas out. He said, go do what you're going to do quickly. Uh, Judas just left. And now he's having this conversation with his disciples that are left there around the table. And as he sits with them, he shows them a pathway to glory that is opposite to the pathway that Judas chose. In other words, Judas figured that the pathway to the red carpet is to put some money in your pocket to, you know, grab all you can get and, you know, get that big house on top of the big hill with the long driveway. And, uh, and, and that way, that's the pathway to glory. And Jesus says that, no, I want to show you another pathway to glory, that, it, that there's another carpet, not the red carpet, but there's a gold carpet that you can walk on. And that gold carpet is where the real spotlight is. Uh, the reward is not a globe or an Emmy, but eternal glory shared with Jesus after a significant life. And so Judas left to betray Jesus and John outlines for us this discussion that followed around the table. And I want you to notice something about the glory that Jesus is talking about and how that glory was shared. Now follow with me in verse 31. He says there in verse 31, so when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that that is absolutely bizarre. Here's Jesus putting into motion the events that are going to end up resulting in his crucifixion. He's sending out Judas to go and betray him. He's about to enter. He's about, he's going to come and, and be arrested. He's going to be thrown in prison. He's going to be beaten. You, you can read the story of the Passion Week. All those things are about to transpire. He's setting into motion humiliation, not, not glorification. And so it's very strange to me that Jesus says, now the son of man is glorified. He must have a different concept of glory than we do. He must be working on a different page. He's reading a different book. Because when I think of glory, I'm, I'm back on that red carpet. You know, I, I see the, the, the lights and the camera action. You know, you want it this way or which, which way you want my profile? Jesus must be on a whole different page. And so it strikes me as weird that he says, now the son of man is glorified. And, and from a human perspective, it didn't make any sense at all. Uh, what was not apparent, however, to the human eye, but was understood by Jesus is that by his death, his love was being put in the spotlight and his love was being lifted up and his love for us was being glorified. 
You see, Jesus understood that, that the pathway to glory that was going to last more than your 15 minutes of fame is glory that comes by love. And by demonstrating his love for the world and his love for us, uh, he was glorified. His purpose and his plan for coming was glorified. That was the whole reason that he came. Uh, you know, 2,000 years later, we're still talking about him. When, when, when all the other, you know, red carpet people, you can't even name the people who walked the red carpet five years ago. Well, maybe some of you can. Uh, I don't even know who walked the red carpet this year. <laughs> but, 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 you know, that 15 minutes of fame can disappear like that. But, but when, when love lifts you up, there is a gold carpet that's going to last for an eternity. And so by setting into motion the events leading to his crucifixion and sacrifice, the Lamb of God was being put on a gold carpet and he was being glorified. Now, notice, notice something else in verse 31. Notice that not only was Jesus now glorified, but also the Father was glorified in the Son. The Father was glorified. Now, you see how that verse continues? As Jesus laid down his life and demonstrated his love for us, then, then what ended up happening was Jesus was glorified, but the glory didn't end with Jesus. That as he demonstrated his love and he was glorified, he also glorified the Father. And the Father was glorified in the Son. As he was a sacrifice and a substitute for us, the justice of God the Father was also lifted up and glorified. So uh, Jesus uh, demonstrated love for us. He was glorified. But when he demonstrated love, not only did he get glory, but God got the glory. I was listening carefully as we were singing that song earlier today about, you know, we glorify the Father. And the challenge for us individually is to understand that as we love each other, as we care about each other, not only are we glorified, but we glorify God. We glorify God. And that's what happened with Jesus. And that same dynamic happens with each one of us. And so the challenge is for us to understand that it is by loving, it is by giving, it is by caring that we are glorified. And uh, so many times we get that backwards. We want to we wanna get the glory by getting. We want to get the glory by looking at what we have, what we can receive. But the real glory comes by loving. And not only are we glorified, not only are we enabled to walk on that gold carpet, but also the Father is glorified. His justice is glorified. Uh, you know, God is not a Father in heaven who practices nepotism. Uh, he, he doesn't sweep sin under the carpet without punishing it justly. He, he doesn't overlook. He doesn't understand. He doesn't run past our sin. And I, if I had a dime for every time somebody came to me and said, we talk about sin and said, well, I'm doing the best I can. God, I believe God's going to understand. You ever hear anybody say that? I believe when I die, I did the best I can. God's going to understand. No, no, God's not. He's not going to understand your sin. He's not going to overlook it. He's not sweeping it under the carpet. He is a just and righteous God, and sin has to be punished. The beauty of it is that the punishment for our sin was diverted from us. And Jesus bore it all on the cross. That's the beauty of it. And so, and so the, as Jesus died on the cross and bore the punishment that we deserve, his justice and his righteousness was glorified. 
So the love of Jesus was glorified and the justice of the Father was glorified as Jesus demonstrated that love. What a wonderful thing that is. And so as brightly as the glory of the love and righteousness of the Son was glorified, just as brightly was the glory of the justice and holiness of the Father glorified. And the Father was glorified because he loved us and didn't spare his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so as we love God and share his love with the world, here is is another way that this glory shines and, and gets spread around. As we love God and share his love with the world, not only are we put on the gold carpet, but that glory also glorifies God. And get this, the people around us who we influence to walk with us in love, they also get glorified. You know, one of the things, when you watch these Academy shows and all these award shows, uh, they, they are up there by themselves. They got the red carpet walk, you know, and they stand there and the picture's taken, but they're all by themselves. The beautiful thing about the gold carpet is that when you get glorified on the gold carpet, you don't have to be there all by yourself. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't be there all by yourself. It is the job of each one of us to make sure that we get some people to walk the carpet with us. Now, who's walking the carpet with you? Who have you brought to follow you as you follow Christ? Who is it that is following your example of walking in love? And it's not always easy. I mean, you can tell people about, you know, walking in love and loving God and sharing his love with the world. But not everybody's buying into that. Not everybody's ready to, to, to live that out. But, but it's our job to just continue to share that message. That the, the route to all that you are looking for in life, the pathway to all that you desire in life is, is, is not found in changing the circumstances around you. It's found in you loving God and loving others. It's found in giving and not receiving. It's found in influencing other people to walk with you as you love God and love others. Are you hearing me? And I would love to, the, to be able to walk on that gold carpet with a crew. Yeah, right, right. Uh, a crowd. And uh, unfortunately, I think some of us are going to have a lonely walk. We're going to have a lonely walk. And so I want to encourage us that we have the responsibility to, uh, to, uh, to love and allow ourselves to be glorified by loving. And in that, we will glorify God the Father. But, but we also want to influence other people so that that glory gets shared around us. Now, here's something else that's very, very interesting. And that is that as... Jesus demonstrated love and he was glorified and then the father was glorified in the son. Notice what happens. The father in return increases the glory of the son. Look at verse 32. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. I like that. In other words, the father is glorified in the son, but then the father turns around and shares the glory by increasing the glory of the son. Oh, you're not following what I'm saying. 
and, and so the father is not grabbing all the glory for himself. He's sharing that glory and increasing the glory of the son. And now there are a number of scriptures that we can turn to to see this. Uh, Philippians 2, 9 and 10. I'll just give you some of these. We're told there that Jesus was given a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. That was a declaration that the father wanted to share that glory with the son. In John 17, 5, Jesus prays for the immediate of that glory to be bestowed upon him by the Father. He says there, glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world was. And so as Jesus uh, was received back up into heaven, the Father bestows on him the glory. So not only was the Father receiving glory, but he shared that glory back with the Son. You know, when, when you're on the gold carpet, and the lights and cameras and all the action comes and points in your direction, one of the things that you recognize is that, you know what? I need to, I need to not take all this for myself. I need to give glory out. And, and you know, the glory that comes by loving is the kind of glory that the more you give, you don't end up with anything less. You can share that glory and you don't end up with anything less. Now, I like that because sometimes we think, you know, boy, if I, if I give him credit, if I share my glory, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, looked at like I didn't do anything. Uh, but, but the kind of glory that comes by loving is not concerned about your own reputation. It's not concerned about what people think about you, but you want to lift somebody else up. And, and this glory that comes by loving, as you lift up the people around you, it's just going to spill back. It's like that cycle that keeps coming back. And the more you demonstrate that kind of love is the more you're glorified and they're glorified and they glorify you some more and you love them and glorify them some more. You're glorified. God is glorified. They're glorified. And it's just a wonderful experience to see how love works itself out. Um, so why is it then, if that's really true, why is it then that, that we are so selfish? Why is it then that, that we want it all for ourselves? Why is it then that I'm so concerned about me and I'm not really that concerned about you? Are you hearing me? Because the pathway to, to the glory that Jesus is talking about is not the pathway that Judas took to go grab the 30 pieces for himself. The pathway to glory is the pathway that says, I'm willing to sacrifice me for you. And if we could, uh, if we could accomplish that, if we could arrive at that place in our own lives, boy, what a different world this would be. We spend so much every day. Time, money, we use up, we waste so much. We spend time and money every day until it's all gone. Precious resources, powerful resources. What if you, what if you reinvested your time into prayer, your resources into support to help us plant churches, prepare leaders, and proclaim the gospel? What if you became a prayer fellowship partner? GOGF has been planting churches, preparing leaders, and proclaiming the gospel throughout the world since 1961. 14 churches on the eastern seaboard, producing weekly radio broadcasts that reach around the globe. We have ministry training in India, Africa, and the Caribbean. Partner with us. Partner with God. Invest in expanding and supporting His kingdom worldwide. Become a prayer fellowship partner. You have the time and resources to make a difference. In 321, we find that Jesus wants to share the glory given to him with us. Glory that comes by loving is one of those commodities that you can share and you never end up with anything less. And we see that exhibited by the Father and the Son and it should challenge us today so that we can in return share glory with the Son. In verse 33, 
He says, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you. Now, Jesus is saying that, that the time is short to learn from my personal presence and example. You know, the ministry that Jesus had with his disciples was ministry that lasted only about three years. It wasn't long. These guys had walked with him for about three years. They saw the miracles. They sat at his feet. They heard his teaching. They watched his example. But, but in that three years, they still didn't really get it. Now, let's not be hard on them when they didn't get it in three years. Because some of us haven't gotten it in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So, so you know, I'm ready to cut them some slack. Because I don't know how long I've been saying. I'm still trying to figure it out. So, so we, need to, we, we need to not be so hard on those disciples. But the fact is that they still didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. They still didn't understand that Jesus was about to be crucified. They still didn't understand this whole concept of laying down your life and sacrifice as a, as a means to glorify the Father and be glorified yourself. They didn't understand that. And Jesus is saying, listen. It's getting late. You all better figure this thing out quick because I'm out of here shortly. And, and the whole point that he's making is that, is that he's not always going to be there to personally give them the example of being glorified by loving, but that after he leaves, it is going to be their job to continue that. And so he says, I have this new commandment that I'm going to give you. He says, pay attention because uh, the events that are about to transpire are going to require your undivided attention and your ability to duplicate it in your life. You see, Jesus is not here physically in the flesh today. He's not walking around Lansdale, but you and I are. And, and so even though he's not with us, it is our job to demonstrate that kind of love in our lives. It's our job to duplicate that in our lives. We're the ones that are left here to be glorified on the gold carpet by sharing God's love with the world. We're the ones that are called to be crucified. We're the ones that are called to sacrifice for others. We're the ones that are called to take up our cross daily. And I know, I know that the cross gets heavy daily. I know that it gets hard daily. But what Jesus is saying is take up your cross daily. Sacrifice yourself for the welfare of the people around you daily. That's the pathway to glory. That's the pathway to significance. That's the pathway to making a difference in people's lives. Not just being focused on yourself. And so I want to I challenge you that uh, Jesus is, is laying a whole new concept in front of them. And he, he lays this concept out in verses 34 and 35. He says, a new commandment I give to you that you what? Love one another as what? I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And so Jesus is explaining to them, he says, listen, I'm out of here pretty shortly. And where I'm going, you can't come. <laughs> In fact, it's almost like you can handle the pathway that I'm about to walk. You're not ready for this. But, but I'm going to, when I leave, I'm leaving you with the task of duplicating the example that I've just left you. And the, the, the example is not the example of Judas, but in contrast to the example of Judas, the example that I'm leaving you is an example of sacrifice. 
It's the example of giving. It's the example of putting the needs of others ahead of my own needs. We talked about that last week, remember? If you don't, get that CD. It's putting the needs of others ahead of my own needs. And, and trust me, I know that that is not the American way. I understand that it runs counter to every impulse in our human being. It doesn't even make sense to most people to put the needs of others ahead of our own needs. But that's the pathway to glory. If you want to walk the gold carpet, that's the pathway that Jesus is laying out. That's his example, and that's what he's telling us. The, 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 he says he calls it a new command, but it's not really new in existence because it had existed for centuries. If you look at 1 John 2 and 7, he, he says, referring to the same command, he says, it's not, it's not a, no new command that I'm giving you, uh, but, but it's new in the sense that it was never really taught in the, when the Jews looked at the Torah and the Jews uh, explored the teachings of Moses, that kind of love was never really explained to them. So it was a new perspective on what God was requiring from us. Uh, some argue that it should be understood as a renewed commandment as opposed to a new commandment. But it was new in their understanding and new in the teaching of the scriptures that they were receiving. And the command not only was new, the command is simple. And that's the, the beauty of, of following Jesus is that it's not complicated. It might be hard, but it's not complicated. You don't have to understand a whole lot of theology. You don't need to go to, you know, the Bible school and, and have a library full of books that you've read. You don't have to have a lot of letters behind your name. It's not complicated. What does that commercial say? It's not complicated. You know, and, and the gospel is not complicated. Uh, it's very simple. It's hard to do, but it's very simple. Love one another. Get out of your own box and your own way and your own head and put the needs of others ahead of your own. That's good. That's a good word for husbands and wives. It's a good word for co-workers and neighbors. It's a good word for family members. It's a good word for all of us to be challenged. It, it's not a new commandment. It's been, it's been in the scriptures for centuries. It's not a complicated commandment. It's easy to understand. And yet, many of us are going to walk out of here today and we're going to go back to business as usual in our week. And our big concern is going to be, it's, oh, woe is me. How am I going to do this? Uh, and so I want to challenge you that it, it's, a, it's a simple command, love one another. It's reiterated in Matthew chapter 22, 37 and 40, when Jesus says that this command is the fulfillment of the law. In other words, you can take all the law and the prophets, all the rules and regulations, all the do's and don'ts that you, that you find in the scripture, and it all gets summarized by loving God and sharing his love with others, loving your neighbor as yourself. You see, love is willing to suffer for the welfare of others. Oh, I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> Somebody need to hear that today. Love is willing to be rejected and despised for the salvation of others. That's why we don't witness. That's why you're going to walk the gold carpet all by yourself. Because we don't want rejection. We don't want people to look down at us. We don't want people to think we're one of those. Love is willing to do without for the provision of others. So when you see somebody in need, even though it might be your last quarter, that's the example that Jesus is giving. That's the example that, that's contrary to the example that Judas gave. Judas was concerned about how am I going to build my new house? How am I going to stack up money in my pocket? 
and, and, and Jesus is saying, you've got to be willing to love other people. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not busting on putting a couple quarters in your pocket. That's not, that's not my point. In fact, I think good financial planning is prudent. It makes sense. But what I am saying, and I said this last week, we shouldn't be so up to here thinking about us that we have no room to help anybody else. And uh, we need to always be considering the need of others. That's loving other people. That's the example of Jesus. And that's the commandment that we're called to. And I, I love the verse here uh, at, the, at the end of verse 35. It says, by this all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That mark that says that you are a Christian is that you have that kind of love for one another. And then, so if you don't have that kind of love for one another, what I say last week, examine yourself. Get down on your knees and look at your heart because uh, that's the mark of uh, being a believer. That's the, the, the thing that's going to make you distinguished from all the others that are out there. And so uh, love is willing to suffer for the welfare of others. That's the pathway to the gold carpet. That, that, that's the pathway to the glory that God desires to shower on us. Are you ready to, to walk that carpet? Uh, Jesus isn't offering you the red carpet, but he has another carpet. And it's not 15 minutes of fame. It's a life of significance it's a life that can impact the lives of other people around you. It's a life that can make a difference in the world today. It's a life that can impact the next generation. If we will get out of ourselves and into the lives of others. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. Let the Lord just speak to your heart for a second. And you know what those areas of need are in your life. You know those things that you get preoccupied, those things that cause you to be self-focused. Ask God to help you. He says he knows it's hard, but it's simple. It's straightforward. It's clear. It's not complicated. We just have to be willing to walk that gold carpet with him. Ask him to help you. A prayer, I just want to include you in this closing word of prayer. And anyone that the Spirit of God is speaking to you. Maybe there's an area in your life that you need help. Just not raise hands. Say, Pastor Tony, just pray for me. Is there one like that? Yes. Amen. See those hands? Yes. Let's just put it up, put it back down. And I'll pray for you. Yes. Amen. Last call. Any others? Yes. Amen. See that hand. Then, Monka, let's stand for that closing word of prayer. And Lord, again, we bow before you, confessing that we have fallen short. Lord, we confess that we have not exhibited that kind of love. That our concern has been inward. Our concern has been about ourselves. But Lord, the example of Jesus is just staring us in the face. As he was willing to set aside all human ambitions all impulses of the flesh to lay down his life for us, to suffer, bleed, and die for our welfare. And yet, Lord, because of that love, he was glorified. The Father was glorified. He was again lifted up, and he shared that glory with all of us. We just want to say thank you. We pray for each one of us, Lord. We pray especially for those that raise their hands. You know their need. You know what those areas of struggle are all about. 
Lord, we ask that you would help us to be the people that you've called us to be. Help us to be able to get past ourselves and to be who you've called us to be. We'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.